What is up, math superstars? This is Mr. Peterson here, bringing you Objective 6.3 Integers. So what is an integer? It's a number in the set of whole numbers, their opposites, and zero. First, you learn to count from 1 to 10. Those are called natural or counting numbers. Then you learned about zero. When we add zero to the set of natural numbers, it is called whole numbers. Integers are whole numbers and their opposites in zero. So in this section, you'll be able to identify and represent integers, order and compare integers, and identify and describe the absolute value of integers. The first thing we need to do is learn the steps on placing integers on a number line. When we're given this problem, place 10 on a number line, here are the steps that you can take for positive integers. Number one, start at zero. Number two, count to the right the number of units until you get to the integer you're looking for. And number three, place a dot and you get to the number line and label that number. What do we do with negative integers? When we were given this problem, place negative 10 on the number line. Here are the steps you can take for negative integers. Number one, start at zero. Number two, count to the left the number of units until you get to the integer. Number three, place a dot when you get to the number and label that number. What are the values for A, B, C, and D on the number line? Since you already have the point on the number line, let's use this, these steps to answer this problem. So step number one, we're going to start at zero. Step number two, you're going to count the units until you reach the point. Step number three, if you went to the left of zero, the integer is negative. In step number four, if you went to the right of zero, the integer is positive. And in step number five, you're going to write the integer that corresponds to the letter. So pause the video and take a moment right now to find the values, then hit play to see if the answers are correct. The following are the beginning steps you can take to ordering integers. So step number one, you're going to plot and label all the integers on a number line. And in step number two, the order will appear starting at the far left being the least, going to the far right being the greatest, and in step number three, you're going to record your answer and how they appear above the number line. When we are comparing integers, we use the following signs. Greater than, less than, equal to, and sometimes not equal to. Let's take a look at a few problems. Number one, the absolute value of negative six is what to six? Here are the steps to figure this out. Step number one, plot them on a number line. Step number two, with this problem, we know that the absolute value of negative six is six units away from zero and that six is also six units away from zero. So in step number three, we're gonna fill in the appropriate sign, which in this case is the equal sign. Question number two, negative six is what to six? With this problem, we know that negative six and six are two different integers, making them not equal. So in the only step that we'll take, we're gonna fill in the appropriate sign, which is the not equal sign. But for these next two problems, these are going to be more common that you're going to find in the, in the class, in quizzes, and in tests. So in, in question number three is negative one is what to negative seven. So here are the steps to figure it out. Number one, you guessed it, we're going to plot them on a number line. So for step number two, the greater value is on the right of the number line with the lesser value being on the left of the number line. So in step number three, the greater than sign is used. And I remember back when I was in sixth grade, we used the alligator eats the bigger number. So in the last problem we're gonna look at, 
we're going to look at negative 3 is what to positive 6. So step number 1, plot them on a number line. Step number 2, the greater value we know is on the right on the number line with the lesser value being on the left of the number line. And in step number three, in this case, the less than sign is used because the alligator eats the bigger number. When we talk about the absolute value of an integer, we are talking about the distance from zero that integer is on a number line, regardless of the direction. Let's take a look at this example. What is the absolute value of negative 6? So here's how we can solve this. Step number 1, plot negative 6 on the number line. Step number 2, label that point as the absolute value of negative 6, which is the two bars to the left and to the right of negative 6. In step number 3, we're going to count the units to return to 0. And in step number 4, we're going to write out this sentence, the absolute value of negative 6 is 6 because it is positive six units is the distance to zero. So what about the absolute value of positive six? So here's how we can solve this. Step number one, we're gonna plot six on the number line. In step number two, we're gonna label this point as the absolute value of six with the two bars to the left and to the right of six. In step number three, we're gonna count the units to return to zero and then in step number four, we're going to write out the sentence, the absolute value of six is six, because positive six is six units away from zero, and that's the distance. When we ask, what is the opposite of one, we are saying, what integer is the same distance from zero, just in the opposite direction? So let's take a look at an example. So what is the opposite of 1? Here are the steps on how to do this. Step number 1, we're going to plot the integer on the number line. Step number 2, we're going to count the units back to 0. This will be how many units you, you count to find the opposite. Step number 3, we're going to go to 0. And in step number 4, we're going to count the units in the opposite direction to the new integer. And that number will be the opposite, so in this case it's negative 1. So let's take a look at another example. So what is the opposite of 5? Here are the steps on how to do this. So the first step is we're going to plot the integer on the number line. Step 2, we're going to count the units back to 0. This will be how many units you count to find the opposite. So step number 3, we're going to go to 0. And in step number four, we're going to count the units in the opposite direction to the new integer. So in this case, it would be negative five. So as soon as you identify the pattern on how to find the opposite of an integer, you'll be able to do this quickly in your head. We can see negative integers all around us in real life scenarios. First, when we play miniature golf, the objective of the game is to have the least amount of strokes, giving you a negative number at the end. If you have a positive number, that means you had a really hard time getting the ball in the hole. The next scenario is about sea level. There are areas of the United States that are classified as above sea level, at sea level, and below sea level. The mountains would be an example of, a, of that above sea level, giving you a positive altitude. If you live below sea level, that means you are below the level of the ocean, giving you a negative altitude. Another scenario is when we have certain days that are just downright cold. If the temperature is below zero degrees Fahrenheit, that means you should wear a lot of layers outside and you'll have a negative temperature in Fahrenheit. In the final scenario, let me ask you this question. Have you ever owed your parents money? That means you had negative money and had to do some chores to quote-unquote break even or get back to zero.